Well, we've got a few minutes left. We're going to hand off to Andrew to do just a very quick um, analysis of, uh, of some of the APIs. Um, you know, we've seen a variety of extension points today with our runtime R engine and our mapping capabilities. Uh, but we have uh, many ways of extending and customizing SpotKind. It's a very strong uh, part of the product. Uh, so we can extend with scripting data functions we saw today. Um, Andrew's going to show an example of Iron Python extensions. We can do uh, C-sharp extensions to add on to the menu systems. Uh, we can do JavaScript uh, extensions to change the graphics palette. Uh, we can do automation uh, alerting, so if a particular uh, threshold is hit in a table or, or a chart, uh, we can send off an email and notify somebody that um, the data has changed to a point that they need to be uh, notified about that. All of these APIs are well documented um, and, and we'll give you these slides and so on today. Uh, so in terms of write back from, uh, to a database from Spotfire, uh, there's lots of reasons you might want to do this. Um, you can uh, comment on data points that you've generated from your analysis. You can take action from inside of your analysis. And Andrew's going to walk you through how this is done with uh, Spotfire information links and, uh, and Iron, uh, Iron Python. So I have here a really simple analysis file that's designed just to demonstrate the concept of writing back to a database using Iron Python and um, Spotfire information links. So what we've got here is a, is a table where I can mark rows and I can enter a comment in here, just any text will do. If I click this button here, that will write back the data to the database and refresh this table here so you can see a comment, Hartford, um, Connecticut. So, um, <clears throat> so the idea behind this is that you can take action from within your analysis and you can write back any data to the database, um, which as Michael said could, uh, could, could trigger something in an external system or interact with any other um, external. So, how do we do that? Well, just to show you the simple uh, database itself, it's got a single data table with, um, with, with, these, with these columns. So I'm going to want to uh, insert into that, data ta that database table, and I can just refresh it and show you here's the row that we wrote back just a moment ago. So that's achieved. Through a couple of mechanisms inside Spotfire, we've got the concept of the information designer, which is where we connect up to the um, to the database itself. Here's the connection, and here's what we call an information link. Now that provides the link between Spotfire and the database itself, and it's the primary method of interacting with that database. If I just edit this information link you can see that there's some SQL stored within this information link, and that's what actually um, in, uh, sends the commands to the database. So what we've got is a, a simple insert statement, and these question marks mean the names of parameters, um, and this is a substitution variable for the current user, the currently logged in user to the to Spotfire. Uh, so we've got the state, the COC, and a comment. So what happens then after that, so we also follow that insert with a select, so that in one transaction we can insert the data and then return the un updated data back into Spotfire. So when we just then select all the columns out of the uh, user actions table. So that's the information link. Now inside, um, inside Spotfire we have the ability to, this is just one, as Michael said, we have this is just one of the extension points. So we have the ability to write Iron Python scripts. Now this uh, actually interacts with the C# -sharp API that's um, that's within Spotfire. So um, here's the aforementioned um, API reference. So it shows all the um, all the objects and methods in in the uh, in, in Spotfire um, and all the things that you can do with that. So it's a matter of then just calling uh, the the objects, create instantiating objects, and uh, calling the methods on those within uh, within Iron Python. So here's the, the Iron Python code. I'm not going to talk you through every line. I just want to get, give you some kind of understanding of what it's actually doing. So uh, essentially, what it does is iterate over the rows in the data table that have been marked by the user, and get the values of the columns that the uh, that that that, that uh, are associated with that row. And so what it will then do is build a set of parameters for the information link, and that's the information link I just showed previously. So here are all the parameters. 
It will then create a data source to that information link, referencing the uh, information link by its um, library ID, its globally unique library ID, and then it will just call that um, information link as a uh, replace data operation. So in doing that, we'll call information link, pass the parameters in, and then return the data in one in one operation back to Spotify. So that's the method of operation. Uh, it's just one way that we can we can write data into a database, but it's nice and lightweight. It's straightforward to program and uh, implement, and can be used to, um, to 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 update any kind of data in in a database. Uh, and so that essentially forms the, the basis of my demo. Thank you, Michael. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, and you know, the information links are generated in a point-and-click operation. The Iron Python script we're going to give you uh, as part of the repository, uh, so that you can do this kind of write back uh, from any of your Spotfire analyses back uh, back to a data source. Uh, yeah. So what Andrew did then was just insert um, the uh, Spotfire data table. Um, you know, from that. Uh, uh, from the Iron Python script into the uh, uh, iterate over the marked rows in the data table, uh, and then call the information link uh, for each marked row uh, to basically substitute or insert the data that he wanted to write uh, into the uh, into the data table that he set up. So his example was he just set up one simple data table, and then wrote back the row of data from Spotfire into that uh, data data table. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, setting up the information link from Spotfire to a data table is a simple point-and-click operation, and you combine that with Andrew's code for iterating down through the macros of the data table uh, to do the insert. Um, that's kind of what happened.